Luke chapter 21, verse 9. Luke 21, verse 9. I want to share the scriptures with you. When you hear of wars and disturbances, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end does not follow immediately. Then he continued by saying to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes, and in various places plagues, famines, and there will be terrors, and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you, and will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. So make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves, for I will give you utterance and wisdom, which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute, but you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. Yet not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. And that's Luke chapter 21, verse 9 through 19 in the NASB version or New American Standard Bible. And so, you know, I feel like we're there. I feel like that verse, you know, speaks to our times that we're living in. There definitely are famines. There definitely are wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and people that hate each other. But of course, as Christians in America, we've enjoyed freedoms for a very long time. You know, um, for many years, I was just honored and blessed and thankful to participate in women's intercessory prayer at Calvary Chapel Chino Valley. And I used to always think, we're not afraid that someone will barge in and say, hey, you guys can't be praying here in the name of Jesus, you know, when we were in our circles praying or, you know, when I've had prayer times here in my home or, you know, even just a church service, whether it be, you know, a harvest crusade or a church service in um, in a building, you know, at a church, um, even a Catholic church or a Christian church or, you know, um, victory outreach or you know any type of church it's it's allowed we are allowed to worship jesus here in america but the persecutions are starting you guys and we know that you know this covid i feel like it really brought out the worst and the best in us as americans as people as even as christians and i think that we really really need to be armored up and to just be aware that People will hate us. And it's it's so painful to think that and to know it. But look what Jesus said. He said, you will be hated by all because of my name. And so it's a promise. You know, Jesus said it, that we will be hated. And, you know, I think of like you praying alongside with me. We love each other. We love to pray for each other and lift each other up. Some of us have maybe never even met in person, but it's a blessing to be able to pray for each other, with each other, and together like this through YouTube. But um, there are people that hate us. And, that, and it's not because of our hair color or... Um, the kind of music we like, it's because of Jesus. And so we have to remember that Jesus, you know, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so a lot of people will say, well, that's it. that's exclusive because that means Buddhists can't enter in. That means Muslims can't enter in. That means other religious people can't enter in because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. But I heard uh, Dr. Um, Timothy Keller say the other day, Jesus is the most inclusive. He said, whoever believes in me uh, will not die, but have everlasting life. And it says that every knee will bow and tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord, all nations. And I love Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no one else. There's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. So on the one hand, it sounds exclusive. Jesus is the only way. But it's inclusive because Jesus calls all men to himself, all men, all women, all people groups, you know, all race, all ethnicities, rich, poor, whatever background you come from, Jesus is calling you to himself. And, you know, the more I read about Jesus and think on him, the more I, I, I just fall more in love with him because he's it, you guys, you know, um, listening to, um, messages about the Bible is awesome. And listening to worship is awesome. But Jesus, get to know Jesus. 
the person, Jesus. Remember, you know, when you're singing a song, I admit it, there's sometimes I have worship in the car or during church time and I'm zoned out. I'm not really thinking on Jesus. I'm just singing the song. I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to give God my devotion. But when I think of Jesus and I just picture his nail scarred hands and his nail pierced feet, and I just think on the person of Jesus, I'm changed. Because you can't help but be changed when you know he's the one that healed the blind, the mute, the lame, the demon possessed, those with seizures, the epileptic, those that were de um, demoralized, marginalized. He is our healer, our redeemer. And so um, we're not going to stop praising and lifting up the name of Jesus, but there will be consequences. And that's what this Luke's portion from um, the Gospel of Luke reminds us that the, the end times are going to be um, tumultuous and troublesome. But Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to say because I will be with you. And he Zaki, does. He always gives us Zaki, the right words. Zaki, he always encourages Zaki. us. It's okay. Go clean your nose in your room with your towel. Isaac has a little bit of a cold, you guys. Keep him in prayer. Um, just a runny nose. I think it's allergies. Um, so praise God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphans. And we have the Holy Spirit to tell us, to prompt us what to say, when to say it, even how to say it. I've had the Lord tell me, don't say anything. It's not the right time. I remember one time I, I had a court case in downtown LA and I took the Metro link and there was a man sharing the gospel with somebody and I wanted so bad to say right on lady listen to what this man's sharing with you this is truth this is right what he's saying is right and the Lord said nope don't chime in don't say anything it's not the right time he's preaching to her you just pray you pray that that woman's heart would be softened and open to the gospel as it was presented by that guy. But my zeal was rising up in me like, yes, yes, he's right. Listen, listen. But the Lord told me, no, that's not the time. And there's been other times. And then there's been times the Lord will tell me, share. You know, I remember one time at Costco, the Lord told me, invite this woman to church. If you see her, give her a, a, a you know, the address of the church and invite her. And I'm like, Lord, I, you know, I, I feel nervous to do that. So I need to do it. I need to be bold because God has a divine appointment. And even if she says no, and even if she never goes to that church, doesn't even read the flyer, she might think, oh, I'm being reminded that God loves me and I should be in church. You know, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes and people's hearts. But anyway, um, just some encouragement that yes, Jesus promised that we will be hated for our love and devotion for him. But it's because the enemy is a liar and people want to stay in their sin. And Jesus asks you to come and to die to yourself. And that's what people don't want. They want to stay in their sins. But we know that Jesus came to give life and life abundantly. And so my dear Lord, Lord, I thank you for your gospels. I thank you for the truth. I thank you, Jesus, that when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see you. We see your face more clearly, Lord. And you remind us that there's going to be harsh times. It's it's there. It's in your word. It's the promises that you're, you're warning us. And it's prophecy of what's to come, Jesus. And we see it, Lord. I can remember 9-11 when I, I couldn't stop weeping, thinking of those 3,000 souls that died because of that jihad terrorists. And I think of, you know, COVID. And, and people dying and them not having enough uh, ways to transport their bodies and, and have proper burials for people, Lord. Or I think of, you know, wars like World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, and um, even gang wars, you know, wars here domestically, you know, this George Floyd thing. And there's just been death and, and, and problems in our country and in our world for years for centuries since the very beginning with Cain and Abel there's been problems but Lord you promise that you give us abundant life and Jesus you are the game changer we know that you are our king you are our rock we praise you we worship you we need you in this hour we need you every moment my son Isaac his nose is running he doesn't even you know, know how to properly clean his nose and I have to help him and remind him, get your little tissue, son, clean your nose. It's so hard and, and I get tired being a caregiver, Lord, and, and you're the caregiver of every single human being, not just on planet earth now, but that's ever lived. Wow. Your word says that your eye is on the sparrow and you take care of us, God. Your word says that that 
when you see a sparrow fall, you're mindful of it. How much more are you of your children? You know, the number of hairs on our head. And that makes me think of Christina Wolf, who doesn't have hair right now because of cancer. And I pray for her, Jesus. I lift up Christina to you as um, she posted today that the cancer is spread and her lungs and her heart is compromised with fluid around her. I pray for a healing, God. I pray you would extend her life, Lord, that you would do what the doctors believe is impossible, that you would extend her life, that you would just allow the chemo and radiation and treatments to do what needs to be done. I know a big part of the cancer journey is mental. Make her strong and sound in you. May she quote scripture to herself morning, noon, and night. And I just pray for Christina. I pray for Tim. I pray for um, so many battling cancer. Jennifer, um, my husband's former principal. I lift her up to you, God. She's just in the very beginning stages of her breast cancer journey. Would you touch her body from her head to her feet, Father? You care about her. You love her. You know her, Jesus. Be with her. And her little son, Matthew, has autism. I pray he wouldn't get so confused when mom is away at City of Hope getting treatment, that you would just strengthen her and, and be with her, Lord. I thank you that you are Jehovah Rohi, our good shepherd. You lay down your life for us, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. And yes, we we believe we're living in the last days. We see the, the wars and the rumors of wars we see um that all the troubles all those things that it says in luke 21 we see it father and we feel the persecution um ramping up and and, and increasing against christians those that love you the, those that worship you jesus they we are being persecuted but lord we know that Greater are you, Jesus, that's in us than he that's in the world. We don't have to fear. We will continue to sing the name of Jesus. We will continue to wear love as the bond of peace. We will continue to preach the gospel, to share the good news with anyone that will listen, Lord. Doing things like this, praying over the airwaves, over YouTube, Father. Praying through text, live, in person. However we can, Father, we will pray for each other, Lord, because we know that we need you. You're the one that can do something about our troubles. You're the one that can help us. You are a very present help in time of need, God. And I just thank you that for being close, Jesus. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You are our rock of refuge. You are our strength, Lord. You are with us. You, you heal us. You're our provider, Jesus, the lover of our soul. Father, like the word says, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and that's what you are to us, Jesus. You are Hashem, the name above all name. You're Al Roy, the God who sees. You're Al Kana, the jealous God. You're jealous for our love. You are the lifter of our head. Thou, O Lord, are a shield about me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. And one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, to dwell in your house forever and ever and ever, Jesus. So we go through trials, we go through tests, and we know that um, as a Christian in America, we feel like a minority. We're not going to stop. We will be like Daniel, standing up for your truth in these days that we live in, God. But just help us to be aware yeah. and to be mindful, yeah. Father, that you would give us the words. You yeah. would open our mouth and we would speak when it's right the right time to speak but be silent when you want us to be silent that's hard father we need your help holy spirit because sometimes we're so bold sometimes we post things on social media that we shouldn't and sometimes you want us to just post a verse and we don't so lord like paul said the things i want to do i don't do and the things I do want to do, I don't practice. And it's so opposite because our flesh is strong. But Lord, help us to crucify our flesh daily, Lord. Like it says in 1 Corinthians, I die daily. Help us die to our flesh. Help us to, to die to temptation. Help us to, to die to the poor me's. God, we get it, Lord. We get the blues. We're Look at my circumstance. Look at me. Look what I'm going through, whether it's financial or relationship-wise. Or like me, being a caregiver. Or those who feel lonely and we can get blue and we can get tired and weary, but God, you're with us. You, your word says in Psalm 18, you make our feet like the feet of a deer. We'll walk on the heights. Help us to walk with our head held high and remember that we fight not for victory because you already won it at the cross, but we fight from victory. Part of One of your names is Victor. You conquered the grave. You're the resurrection and the life. You're the bread of life. You're the living water. You're the ancient of days. And we trust you, Lord. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. So help us to have that truth hidden in our hearts so we might not sin against you and so we might live boldly honestly and wholly in these last days god because the days indeed are evil forgive us of our sins god forgive us of our time management lord i know i'm convicted of that constantly help me to have 
to be wise with my time, to be a good steward with my time, because you're going to judge every idle word, Lord. And I want to use words that edify. Forgive us all, Lord, of the words that we've said where we were critical, where we were mean-spirited, or even just a thought that was impure. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to walk in your ways, to walk purely and uprightly, Lord. I pray for unity in all the small groups. I know many women and, and men that are in small group Bible studies right now. Would you guard the unity and protect the unity of these groups? Groups. I pray against fighting or bickering I'm a, or disagreements, I'm Lord. I'm a I just lift that up to you, God. Swimming. I just thank you for being our God. Swimming. And I just pray that you would help us. Swimming. One of your names, Holy Spirit, is helper. Help us Swimming. to abide in the name of Jesus and to abide in your ways every day until you call us home. In Jesus' name, amen. Swimming. God bless you guys. Swimming. Isaac, Jesus loves you. Isaac, Jesus loves you. Jesus, Jesus loves you. Jesus so much. So much.